Welcome to the program. Today we'll talk about whether the Trump dump is underway. We'll look at investor housing and we'll talk about some stocks that are moving right now. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad about money. money. Gents, um, markets were down last night. Mm. Some, some concerns about Trump not getting um, some bills through through Congress. Yeah. Pete, is the Trump dump underway? Uh, I think it's about time that the market went and down. What is the Trump dump? Well, the Trump dump is when you get this correction, an overdue correction. The market's up, what, 12 13%. So people like Paul and I have been on this game for a long time. We expect about 4 or 5% retracement. Then you say, buy the dip, you buy the dip, and you get the retracement. We're not getting it. All the dips have been really um, mm. um, shallow. And what's happened is there's been a fear that he won't get his health measures through as mm. well as he might have thought of. Mm. And then they say, hang on, if he can't get his health measures, maybe his tax measures won't get through. Paul, biggest yeah, I think it's since first, October. That's right, the first 1% move in the Dow since October or the mm. election. So. Yeah. That's not, you know, that period is hugely stable in terms mm. of uh, mm. the little sell-offs there haven't been. Uh, sorry, Marty, you... Uh... No, no, all good. I was just going to say, biggest fall since o October. Mm. Um, you think that, the, the, that this will continue? And is it a buying opportunity? Well, I think it really is a test for our market in Australia because our market hasn't gone up as much. I mean, it's really hard to find value in our market because, mm. you know, people look and say they don't like the consumer discretionary because they're worried about Amazon. Bloody Amazon. They don't like the retailers because they're worried about, you know, the, the Aldis. They don't really Bloody like the BHP Aldi. and Rios because they're not really sure about commodity prices. Yep. Banks, you know, they're under pressure because of, you know, all the stuff that happened. It's fine. Australians are stuff. wimps. No way to buy, right? We're wimps. So, Americans but, have a crack. But not Notwithstanding that our market really hasn't gone down. Okay. So the question is, is there, just to see today in particular, just how, how we react. If we hold in okay today, I think you've got to say our market has strong underlying yeah. support. And we do. Yeah. And I think it does, but look, let's just see how it does. I'm it didn't like, go I'm, down on much, really. It hasn't gone down on much. fears that stuff might get, but not get passed through yeah, Congress. It wasn't I, a big announcement. It didn't write any key data, but I think it? that was always going to happen with Trump. I mean, you knew it was a lot of talk, and, mm. and you, it's about delivery. And, and it, I don't think anyone should be surprised that this might be a little harder yeah. than And if you made 13, if you made 13 percent or even more as a fund manager, why wouldn't you take a bit of money off the table? Yeah. yeah. I, I, th I think, you know, Dips, are, we need a dip. This is maybe the start of it. Yeah. But I think you've got to just see how the, our market does here in the next day. Let's stay with you, Paul. Investor housing is, is back in the news as house prices continue to, to, to well, rise. Everyone's looking for the, the solution around housing affordability. It's yeah. the new two buzzwords in politics, apart from ADC, is housing affordability. Mm. Uh, there's some interesting story today coming out about ASIC and APRA meeting with the RBA, the, the Council of, of Financial Systems Council, I think it's called, mm. uh, about changes to investor housing and, and some mooted changes to be announced shortly. That is the suggestion that the 10% cap on banks might be lowered to 5%. That's the amount of they can growth, grow, of, investor growth of investor housing. Yeah. Uh, things like the interest serviceability test. Currently, most banks use 2% over the current cash rate to measure whether you can actually service your loan. That would go to at least 3%. So if you, if you, get, if you couldn't service it after 3% rise interest rates... They wouldn't give you the money. Yeah, a lot of banks actually use higher than that. They use money. at least 2%. But, yeah. the, but our APRA basically say, setting a minimum and mm. taking that from 2 to 3%. Yeah. And then thirdly, differential capital, which is probably the biggest uh, change, which would banks would have to apply different lots of capital, a different rate of capital for an investor home loan versus a normal and residential that's going to affect the share price, Paul. That's going to have a big impact. Um, so look, all look, mooted, we should say, at this all point mooted, in time. But I, I, Good point, Marty. I mean, look, maybe affect the share price, not sure, but certainly have an impact yeah. on uh, on the investor home market. Did you think some ideas about negative gearing, Peter? Yeah, look, I, I think they should even think about, because negative gearing, look, Labor really wants to get rid of negative gearing on existing homes, and they want to have it, they keep it on for new homes. But all that would do is push up the, the cost of new homes, because investors mm -hmm. would chase them, because that's where the tax deduction is. I reckon they should just think about getting rid of negative gearing for, say, for two years for any new purchases, which would take investors out of the market. And then you don't want to run the risk of creating a collapse, which I think taking the negative gear. So anything already negative gear would be allowed to claim the tax today. Grandfathered. Yeah. Grandfathered. It wouldn't be an outright, it wouldn't stop negative gearing forever, but no. you just take it, say, for the next two years. Correct. If you, if you bought a property yeah. for that period, you couldn't claim the... Yeah, I, no, I'm going to get Saul's going to test it out. Yeah. Yeah. This. I just think it's, it's a more rational way just to, to chop the investors in their tracks, they're going too far. Maybe we should get you into politics, Pete. Yeah. Um, Peter Switzer for PM, yeah. is that the story? Too trustworthy for there politics. Is, there <laughs> is possibly is, you never know your luck in a big city. Um, companies now, um, Pete, uh, Blackmores yeah. has, 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 has had some news recently that, yeah. that has well, taken your, uh, yeah, well, well, your interest. Well, basically, I, I, I made the point that 
Blackmores and Domino's and Vocus are quality companies, but they're not the same class as the, the banks and Telstra and, and BSP and Rio, but they had potential to it. They were, like Blackmores was $200 or so, went down to about 98 99 So I wrote a story saying they're probably worth a speculative play on the basis that they have quality. And along comes the Chinese and they've changed their import rules and Blackmores have gone up, what, 11.9% yesterday. So I they think... should be good for Bellamy's as well. Uh, Bellamy's was good for Bellamy's, it was good for A2 Milk as well. So. Yeah, and I think that that's probably the, has been the story of this market. There have been some quality companies beaten up. Mm. I mean, I think we think TPG is another one in that category. I rate that higher than Vocus. Mm. Uh, the whole telco sector sold off. TPG reported yesterday, beat expectations, uh, and the shares are up five percent. Mm. Uh, look again, if you look at that, it was a twelve dollar stock went down to about six, mm. now back up to about seven. So there's been some huge movements in that telco market. So I think there's still a couple of things out there like that maybe worth looking at. I think the other one just to talk about to finish off, Marty, is this whole thing with um, you know, Downer EDI and the bid for Spotless. I mean, Downer's got no track record. So yeah. I don't know where that's going to head, but I think if I was a Spotless shareholder, out I'd the door. Take the right money, money and go. Take I'd, money I'd be and really worried about a Downer share. You'd, down down you'd right? clean up on Spotless. I'd clean up on Spotless, yeah. <laughs> that's all we've got time for. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money.